welcome back out to the garage today. We're not out in the greenhouse here. I was out here doing some welding projects with my cheap little welder there. Actually works quite well for small projects. You can see we've got a little bit of snow dusting us. I got a fire going in the greenhouse. So that is why we're in the garage today. So I don't freeze my butt off. I went and lit this fire out in the greenhouse because we're really just operating with whatever geothermal and minimal solar. I constantly have to clear the snow off the panels to operate any solar powered system. So today we're out here checking this little variable speed switch. Now it's pretty little interesting little piece and this piece is about $5, five and a half. And you can get two of them uh, for like seven to eight dollars. So they're not that expensive for their purpose. Now this is very useful to be able to control the motor speed on some 12 volt DC items. Such as pumps like these and fans and this one's attached to a board right now. But this is just another large inline fan. We were using this to get some good airflow inside the beds of our greenhouse there. And it was just really pushing a lot of air. So today we were talking about this little tiny switch here. Now this is a very low voltage. It's got a two amp rating. So there's a tiny little fuse on this circuit board that actually flips at a higher amperage. So let's talk about amps, watts, and volts real quick. Your amps are going to measure the flow and your volts are going to be how much pressure is on the line in there, how many are packed together moving through that line. And your watts are going to be the power that is used by your system. So that was just a very simple representation of how those all correlate together. So I spent a little time writing some gibberish here. So. W is going to stand for watts. Watts equals amps times volts. Amps equals watts divided by volts and volts equals watts divided by amps. So those are all separate things but they all correlate together and we're often told what volt. We always know what volt system and then we're often told what amps. So we don't always have a disclaimer on what wattage some of these items are going to be. So for instance, a pump like this. So this pump here can be used for many different things and it's not a very high draw. So this is a 12 volt pump with a 1.5 amp draw. So we're going to relate that into watts because it doesn't tell us what watts. So we've got 1.5 amps times 12 volt system gives us 18 watts of use per hour. I'm just using this little formula here to always figure out my usage, especially on a system like this. So we don't want to overdo the wattage or amperage that goes through a little controller because this is rated for 30 to 33 watts or two amps of current. Now again, we've got a fan here, a small centrifugal fan. It's been used a few times in the greenhouse for experiments. It's attached to a nice metal plate. So this is what we're going to actually hook this up and operate this little controller with. But before we actually hook it up, I wanted to talk about all of the different flows of a few little things here. We've got two different pumps and two different fans. So with this centrifugal fan here, we've already got this row down. We've got 1.3 amps of current and the voltage gives us 15.6 watts of max power. So being able to find the wattage of your little devices you'll be operating definitely helps out. Just being able to run and operate your systems appropriately without overdrawing or causing any fire risk. So we've got another pump here, this little C-flow pump, this thing. We haven't really used it yet, but it is going to be for a heating experiment inside the greenhouse, so stay tuned for that. But I wanted to break down the usage of it to see if we were able to use our little controller. So we've got a two amp at 12 volts, gives us 24 watts. So we knew the amperage, we obviously know. I just like to figure all this out. So we're using a max of 24 watts to operate this pump at full flow. So we should be able to operate all of these little systems with some type of little controller like this because I will buy a few more and I may buy a five amp one. But the little two amp switch in here is like a little fuse that 
basically breaks the connection and once it cools back off it connects again so as long as it doesn't get damaged it does protect itself so we do have one more thing here this C flow 130 cubic foot inline fan here and this thing is a little bit too much I think it runs what did I have wrote down it runs 2.5 amps. We've got two and a half amps of flow going through that fan and we cannot control that. I have a feeling that if we turned it up just a little bit past three quarters, we would be pushing it and this would trip its switch and stop operation. Just by understanding all of the simple basics to the electronics and the flow and amperage, voltage and wattage, you can preemptively design this system to have less flaws, obviously. So you can pre-plan and get everything set up properly. So let's bring the camera down here so we can actually hook this little guy up. So there is just a little screwdriver port. See that slowly open up there, screw all of these and just open all the terminals up. You've got a nice like bent piece of metal to pinch the wire down in there. So you can see we got all of those opened up and then we can just screw them back down and they pinch back down on the wire. And it does have some English and some Chinese for the Chinese people out there on how to route the power to this thing. So unlike with most wire jobs, we only have a small amount of exposed cable because these are not very deep little sockets. So that one's sealed nice and tight. So this right here is why I don't have a whole lot of exposed wire because they're not very deep and I don't want any wires hanging out the end here so it's a nice clean little circuit there. We're going to go ahead and plug in our power to our motor. Plug in the ground or negative wire to the motor. Alright, so we've got all four wires. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Now really all I have to do is hook this to our battery. So we made ourselves a extra large 12 volt circuit. This is just two 12 volt batteries hooked together to make an extra large 12 volt circuit. A little more power and a little more longevity so I don't drain either one of these batteries too awful much. Let's go ahead and turn on our switch here. So there is a little light with it. So this little switch is working. I mean, I don't want to put too much strain onto the wires themselves, but this thing is blowing some serious air. And then I can turn it all the way down to basically nothing. You can see that fan is just barely spinning through there. So that is a pretty cool fine tune. So when I click it, I can click the light off, light back on. Very interesting to be able to control and have such fine tuning capabilities on your own. Now this is just a DIY switch. Most of the items we buy in the world do have fail safes and controllers and switches and stuff in them so to be able to create this very cheaply on our own is basically what it's all about doing this on our own and figuring it all out is the coolest part about it just teaching ourselves now we can upgrade to a 5 amp switch so what the main goal of using a switch like this is for is fine tuning and refining your system and being able to get better longevity out of all of your little batteries and solar powered systems oh. Sorry, I had to take a phone call. Uh, 
my wife has no idea where I'm at. I'm just out here hanging out by myself. Kids are at school, so there ain't no responsibilities today other than working on the homestead. So what we're gonna be using these for is fine tuning air flowing systems for heating a greenhouse and fine tuning our water flowing systems and controlling our motors. And it's just all part of getting more fine tuned control over our systems and the heating and trying to get better longevity on all of our systems themselves. I will sign out by showing this little fan one more time. It is super cool to be able to just mess with the systems and see what we can achieve for darn cheap or free. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video out in the greenhouse.